Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I decided to completely ignore my health and my fitness because we're going to prepare a delicious and creamy cheesecake. Before starting with our delicious cheesecake, we're going to prepare our base. To make the easiest base in the world, we're only going to need cookies and some butter. Since I don't have a food processor, let me show you an easy technique to turn your cookies into crumble. Put them in a bag and try to get all the air leaving only the corner open. Just be careful so you don't end up making a mess in your kitchen. Break the cookies so you can move your rolling pin easier and take your time. So please don't get your frustration out with the poor cookies. Check so you don't end up with big pieces of cookies as we need it to be quite fine. Normally we use graham crackers but nobody will judge you if you use Oreos, Walkers or Biscoff. This step will vary depending on how obese you want to be. In my case I found these butter cookies. Obviously if you have a food processor you can put everything there and jump this step. Once you're done we're going to put what once were cookies back in our bowl. Because we're going to add 50 grams of melted butter, combining everything until reaching a consistency of wet sand. This is going to help to keep the base together and not fall apart when you want to try your cake. Leave it on the side as we're going to prepare our cake mold. I'm going to use this 22 cm mold. Grease the mold with some butter and cover it with parchment paper. This will make our life less miserable when we're trying to unmold our cake. Let me give you some tips of how to make the round base. First one is, turn your mold over and mark the paper to give you the round shape of the base and cut it. Second tip is folding the parchment paper like if you're going to make a paper plane. Flip the mold over so you can allocate the center and cut the excess paper. And here you are. So please, don't screw it up as I did on my first try. Once you have the base and the walls covered with paper, throw in the ground cookies and butter mixer, flattening everything out. You can use a glass or like in my case a pot of spices and press it down so that the dough gets tighter and more uniform. Bake it in a preheated oven at 180 degrees Celsius for 8 to 10 minutes or until the cookie gets golden brown. Please don't burn it. Once it's tan and sexy, let it cool down because it's time to prepare our delicious filling. For this, you will need 600 grams of cream cheese at room temperature. This will help you beat it easier and avoid having pieces of cream cheese flying through your kitchen. Add 200 grams of sugar, a pinch of salt and we're going to beat everything for a few minutes until the sugar crystals dissolve in the cream cheese. Mixing the filling will help us incorporate air, making it more creamy and lighter. How to know if the sugar is already dissolved? Just try it. It's important that you use a rubber spatula from time to time to scrub the walls of the bowl so that everything gets combined. After a few minutes mixing everything, add 200 milliliters of sour cream. This will help us soften up the texture of the cream cheese making it creamier. It will also add a touch of acidity and will give us extra moisture to our cheesecake. Incorporate everything well and occasionally scrub the walls of the bowl. After a few minutes we're going to add 3 eggs. Add one by one so that they can incorporate well into the mixture. The egg whites will help give it more volume while the egg yolks will give a creamier texture to our cheesecake. Now add a touch of vanilla and around 2 tablespoons or 6 grams of cornstarch. Look, the cornstarch is optional but this will help us give more firmness when we're cutting it and especially avoiding getting cracks on our cheesecake. To finish with our filling, add lime or lemon zest and also some juice. This will give a citric touch and help balance the flavors. Mix everything one last time but avoid trying it. It has raw eggs and you already know what's the business with salmonella. Jump back to our cake mold and before adding our delicious filling we're going to cover the base with aluminum foil because we're going to bake this using a bain marie technique. This will help us prevent water from entering our cake and making a mess. The humidity will help keep the top of the cake from drying out and also prevent it from cracking. Add all the mixture and transfer the cheesecake to a baking tray. I recommend you adding hot water once you have already put the tray in the oven and don't make the same mistake I did. 
But if you screwed it up like me, carefully take this to a preheated oven at 150 degrees Celsius and let it bake for that temperature for an hour. In the meantime, we're going to prepare our raspberry sauce. For this, add 200 grams of raspberries, add 50 grams of sugar, a touch of salt and a few tablespoons of water. Let it boil for a few minutes until the raspberries have turned into a puree. And then strain everything to remove the seeds. At first, the sauce will look a bit liquid, but the raspberries contain pectin. This will help us thicken up the sauce once it's cold. Once the hour has passed, turn the oven off and let's leave the cake for another extra hour in there. Don't open the door. The temperature change can cause cracks in your cheesecake. Just be patient. After the cake has enjoyed the moment of spa, remove it from the oven, but not from the mold, and let it cool before putting it in the fridge. I don't recommend cutting it afterwards since it has to rest for at least 8 hours. But if it's possible to wait until tomorrow, please do it. So after a few hours that it has cooled down, it's time to wish him a good night. So, it's the next day and it's time to wake up our cheesecake and see how it looks. We're going to remove the blankets like when your parents woke you up to go to school but obviously with more love and less screaming. Let's cut a piece to see how this beauty looks. I recommend you heating your knife to have a cleaner cut and let's plate a piece. To decorate, add a raspberry, a piece of mint, don't forget to add a bit of your raspberry sauce and some icing sugar. Enough talking, let's give it a try. If you're interested in the recipe, you can find it in the description below or also on our website. I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching and if you learned something, don't forget to like, subscribe and share it. See you next week.